All right, here we are. Here's the information that I collected. I've done it in uh, two groups of two columns, first column being the log number that I picked, and the second column being the length of the log. Now, I wrote the information down on another sheet of paper, and I reorganized it here with the, the log numbers in order from smallest number of the log to up to, to 66, the, the largest one I got. Again, I, I started off with the, the logs being numbered from 1 to 71. So I, want, I just wanted you to see that, I, you know, by randomly choosing numbers from the calculator, I did get a pretty good uh, set of values ranging from the smallest ones. Here's 4 and 8. I got 12, 17. I got numbers in the 20s. I got numbers in the 30s. A couple in the 40s. Got one in the 50s and three in the 60s. So I did get a nice range of values. Um, the smallest length of log that I picked from my 15 random logs was 17 inches. That was my smallest. And my largest one was 23 inches from log number 65. And one more thing I want to point out on this page is that you might notice that log number 33 came up twice. So I don't ignore that. I definitely keep that. In fact, I have to keep that if I really want to have a true random sample. With a, with a population of only 71 logs and taking a, a relatively large sample of 15 out of 71, you can really expect that to happen and you must allow it to happen. So log number 33 occurred twice. Of course, it was still 17 inches both times I measured it. Um, here's our information. And what I'm going to do is now calculate my range of values. As I said, my largest value was 23, so I take that. My shortest length was 17. To find my range, I simply subtract 17 from 23. So we say that the range is 6, or in this case, 6 inches. Next, I took the same information and organized it from the smallest of 17 to the largest of 23 and I created a frequency distribution table. We'll show most of the table here anyway. The first column of course being the length and this is in inches and over here is the frequency. As you can see I had I had three logs that were 17 inches, one that was 19, four that were 20 inches, four that were 20.5, two that were 21, and skipping down to the longest one, one was 23. As you can see, I really didn't do a very good job of getting close to 18 inches, but that's okay. And the reason that I organized it into a frequency distribution is because this allows me to enter the information in my calculator in order to calculate the, the, the mean and the standard deviation. It allows me to do this very efficiently. So hopefully you have watched the video that explains how to use a calculator to do standard deviation, but I'm just going to go quickly through it again. And you probably won't be able to read the screen, but at least you can see what, what uh, keys I'm pressing. So we start by turning on the calculator, and we do enter of the, the second function key along with the stat key, this one right here. We choose one variable data, and then we enter the data key one more time, and we're prompted for the first data value. My first data value is 17. And again, we enter this information not by using the Enter key, but by using the down arrow key. Pressing that, again, you probably won't be able to read this. The value 17 occurred, you can see from the data here, it occurred three times. So I'm going to press a 3 for the frequency. And then again, enter the down Enter it by pressing the down arrow key. I'm prompted for the second value, which is 19. There was only one of those. So I enter that, and it, the default value is a frequency of 1, so we'll just accept that. Next is 20. 20 occurred four times, so I enter the 20 and press the 4 for the frequency. 20.5, or 20.5, occurred four times, so I'll press a 4 for the frequency there. 21 occurred two times, get that entered, and 23 occurred one time, and I enter that. All the data is entered. I'm now being prompted, which you can't read it, but I'm prompted for the seventh value. 
there is no seventh value, so the next thing we press is this stat var key right here. This makes all our calculations. The first thing it shows us is, is the size of our sample. In this case, it's 15. I press the right arrow key to show me my next value, and I'm going to be putting this in here as I read it off. Since you can't read the screen anyway, I'll move this out of the way. The sample mean, according to the calculator, is 19.8. Okay. The sample standard deviation, which on my calculator is shown by S of X, we know it just as S, S for the standard deviation. It has a long decimal there. We're going to round this to one decimal place, so we're going to call it 1.7. By the way, these units are inches. Okay. So my mean is 19.8, quite a ways off of 18 inches, and my standard deviation is 1.7 inches. Well, I'd like to know how I did in terms of, of overall based on this sample. So I want to create my range of normal, usual values. To create the upper end for this range, we take the mean, which is 19.8, and we write upper here. We're going to take the 19.8, and we're going to add to it two times the standard deviation. And this will give me a value of 23.2, and this is in inches. The lower end of this range starts with my mean, 19.8, and then we simply subtract two times the standard deviation. And this value, if you want to use a calculator and just figure it out, is 16.4. So my range of normal, usual values, in this case of, of logs cut by me just eyeballing it, the range goes anywhere from 16, these are inches by the way, 16.4 inches, clear up to 23.2. Another way of stating this, relating it back to the idea of cutting wood, if I cut my pieces of wood by eyeballing, I'm trying to make them 18, it looks like I am liable to get any size of around 16 and a half inches, clear up to something that's 23 inches. So when I first look at that, it doesn't look like I am doing a very good job just eyeballing them. Maybe I should have measured them in the first place. However, I'm sure I did better than some people, and I'm sure I did a lot worse than other people could have done. That concludes our little discussion of cutting up firewood.